Hey everybody, this is Freak, bringing you an audio commentary for WCReplays.com. <clears throat> the audio commentary is copyrighted by the site, so don't steal it. Um, there's that, basically. Uh, this audio is, as you probably read from the description, or Mirror. I'm still undecided whether this is one or two games, but I guess you'll know. Uh, but this first game is Grubby vs. Lynn, what I believe to be game five. So that you know, is the description. I'm learning the game right now. You should be too. I'm going to get this started pretty quickly. Uh, two minutes, 1x speed. Grubby's point of view. Actually, Observer's point of view, most likely. But the one, well, more than one, the, the things I'm going to point out, really, a lot of this is because Grubby vs. Fly is coming out, you know, and for those of us who don't play Orc Mirror, or Orc in general, I suppose, playing Orc kind of makes you play Orc Mirror. Uh, it'll give you a little bit of a description of how this game would be going and, and stuff. The kind of things to look for so that you know what's important what's not. I think it's fairly interesting. So, uh, I'm at two minutes and two seconds actually, so get yourselves there. Uh, I paused a bit late, sorry about that. Two minutes, two seconds. Um, and basically this is, I'm going to try to point out the important things that people are doing and the important things to look for in the match. So, I'm there. I'm at 2 minutes 2. If you're not, pause this audio, get yourself there, then unpause it. Because we're going to unpause in 3, 2, 1, unpause. 203, 204, 205, 206. Alright. So, Blademaster of Lin coming out, doing whatever. Um, interesting thing that Lin's doing, actually, is he's going for the building cancel. This is mostly because his scout peasant notices that that voodoo lounge is you know, up there and under construction, and additionally, that uh, it's possible to get into his base. Actually, there are two places to get into the base. There's to the side of the altar, and to the right over here. Now, I'm not sure if Grubby wanted to block off the base completely or not, because, for example, Lin, I'm pretty sure did. I think next to the Voodoo Lounge and Trees, that's a full block. Um, the reason for this is because, watch this right here, a Blade Master in an Orc's base, super annoying. Um, just really, really, really annoying. Um, and it's just a lot of damage output. You notice that Grubby does not have the lumber to tech right now because of this. Lin is, should be on his way to tier 2 in just a second. Uh, he actually lost that scout peon. Okay. And Grubby going to oh, almost lose his. Grubby still not enough lumber to get himself tier 2, and Lin actually is teching now. So this harass actually has gotten Lin a little bit of tech advantage, which can be useful. He certainly costs his opponent some lumber. And Grubby, however, is like, oh hey, sup, I was creeping. Hi, I got an EXP tome, and I bought a circle and an ability, and now I killed a grunt. Balance. Um, so certainly some luck from Grubby getting the EXP tome, getting him level 2, because crit certainly helped him kill the grunt. Uh, but the interesting thing here is, you know, both players know what's what's going on. Like, they, they're so... they're each thinking, like, two steps ahead. Uh, Grubby knows that Lin was already at the bottom left of the map, and even though Grubby's level 2 and would win a straight fight, he knows that Lin is much closer to access to the boots, and it means that he's not going to get them. And he puts the grunts there just to be sure that, okay, yep, Lin really did go for boots there. And it's just, you know, a little scouting technique, whatever, um, to make sure he wasn't creeping something ridiculous. But, you know, here's the crux of the game, though, that's going on right now. The creeping. The creeping is the most important part of this game. I mean, really, the orc army is the blade mass, and everything else is just support. I mean, there's a reason the entire army consists of spirit walkers and raiders. In snare to keep stuff in place for the blade master to kill, and spirit walkers so that you don't want to focus the blade master. And, yeah, certainly the units deal damage. I mean, absolutely. But... It's the Blade Master. And so if you're ever in question or in doubt as to who's winning, look at the items and the level on the player's Blade Master. And if those are relatively equal, look at the food count. And, and then upgrades, I guess. But really, so much of this game is decided by the Blade Master, and I cannot stress that enough. So there's that for ya. I mean, just look at this blade chop down that null. It's freaking imbalanced. And there's three. And yeah, stronghold going up, stronghold going up. Lin just behind in EXP, he's a full level down because, you know, he lost to Grunt, which made his creeping slower. And he was level 1 when Grubby was level 2. 
and pace up creep steal time please thanks okay bye so if Grubby's good he'll do this right he actually goes for the grunt which is interesting and pow stolen GTFO um, Lin did get the the belt of strength but Grubby basically I mean look at that that is not something a level 1 blade master could have done there's no way in hell that's that's hi I'm a level 3 blade master with mana what's going on I'm winning this game I mean his attack speed is just ridiculous to be honest so, again, very much the heroes that determine this game. Grubby should be able to block him off from that grunt, but I think he's doing kind of a bad job in surrounding and, and what have you. He really should have been able to get this, and it's just really sloppy play in my opinion. But Blade Master with, with, with Blade Master with some focus on that grunt, just peace. And he's doing this this attack move cancel thing. And it's really powerful to do something like that. But you know getting the spirit lodge now out in front and real quick and very good job on the wind walk in time by the way real quick there's something important to point out you know he blocked off the back of his base and even though he could build these lodges and beast areas in the back of his base this is grubby i'm talking about uh fly can i guess but fly i believe actually blocked off the back of his base and when you do that when you block off your peons you actually have to go and put up the beast and lodge and the important thing about this is that your bestiary and lodge are going to basically be part way up and cancelable right about when your shadow hunter comes out and as long as you have dust you should be able to force your opponent away it is rare for your opponent to have a shadow hunter out and then be in your base able to cancel stuff um, you know before they're, they're too basically like you'll have a shadow hunter coming out and your buildings will be up your opponent will have the same but in order for him to cancel your shit he has to come over to your side of the map, which, you know, travel time means that he's probably not going to have a Shadow Hunter with him. And so you'll be Shadow Hunter with versus an army that's Shadow Hunter lists. And it should uh, make you force your opponent away, which is why these players have their buildings up in the front of their base, because it helps defend against Hall Smash and all these other things. And again, the, the peons. Well, see protected. Uh, so let's see. Grubby obviously made a one entrance base. Um, I think it's my opinion that he made a one entrance base on purpose. Uh, and then he could have built a two entrance base or a zero entrance base if he wanted to. But I don't know. But anyway, here's the fight. And it's really all about killing the Shadow Hunter while he still has mana. And you just notice just the things that they're focusing on. Uh, no, not anywhere time soon. Not anything time soon. Not anytime soon. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, you know, hacks on the